We believe that everything that happens comes from a supernatural God and so prayer is the catalyst to see God's hand at work and everything that we feel like we're doing uh, we do not believe we can do except by the power of God. And more than anything else it is our relational lifeline to God. Now beyond that I think God works powerfully through the prayers and answers requests and does incredible things but we are primarily transformed through prayer. As I spend time with Him uh, and I begin to press into Him, that my heart is, is tilled, it's softened, it's um, receptive to what He's doing. I'm, it brings an awareness to um, how He's speaking. If we really believed what prayer does, that it does, we believed in prayer, we would probably never leave our knees because more is accomplished in prayer than all the work we could possibly do. Derek Prince said once years ago, if you have 10 minutes to pray, spend the first nine minute worshiping before you spend time with God. And there's a lot of truth to that. So often we have our Christmas list and we just want to yap, 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 yap and tell God what all we want. But prayer is more about listening and spending time with God than actually us talking. So to me, it's just waiting on God and just hearing what He has to say. I believe to see prayer and mission together, we're going to see an explosion happen in our city. And I believe that convergence of the two is essential, whether it's church planting or whether it's cross-cultural missions. Prayer needs ministry and ministry needs prayer. I believe we will see the explosion of God and we'll see it sustained. So what I've found is the people that can make it the long run in the ministry are people of prayer. And uh, this is what A.W. Tozer said, don't think worship and work don't go together. It's the greatest marriage. So to me, the key to longevity is that we're gonna pray and we're gonna do missions. The major benefit of being involved in the Unceasing Prayer Initiative for our church has been an awareness of ministry beyond our congregation. And for our church, when, I, when we brought the vision of being part of the Unceasing Prayer Initiative, that it brought a sense of uh, an awareness of our identity as part of the church at large in our city. Consistently people have said, hey, when I actually sign up and when I actually remember and when I actually spend that hour in prayer, my life is richer for it. We are seeing more and more people be involved. We're seeing uh, a heart for the city grow, perhaps uh, a better put an awareness of the needs in our city grow. But the benefit of our city is that the body of Christ is coming together. I told the pastor last week, I find incredible strength just driving by your church knowing that we're laboring together. And I try not to go by without saying a prayer for them. Um, there was a lot of division in this city. There were a lot of walls, a lot of barriers. And so it's things like unceasing prayer that I'm excited about because I've seen it begin to break these walls down. What we're needing to do as pastors is to be able to see the big scope, big scheme of things. At the same time, we need to, as pastors, encourage each other along the process because ministry is difficult. Um, the call is difficult. But when you have another, uh, another pastor who is undergirding you in prayer, who is walking alongside of you, who is praying with you, it makes all the difference in the world. Every, every spiritual leader pastoring in the Christian community that I talk to, they all have a sense that God wants to do something in our city. God is raising up some men and women that are willing to say, why don't we do this together? Why don't we do this? Because we can't do it alone, but together. And I'm seeing it like never before. The Greater Austin Impact, the Unceasing Prayer Initiative, and so many others uh, through Austin House of Prayer, churches are coming together. And I believe, you know what I think that really the key thing is, and uh, Steve Hawthorne said this, he said that the Second Great Awakening happened because of friendships. Isn't that crazy? What if God wants to do revival in Austin just because we like each other? It brings the churches together around the thing that we're most committed to, and that is the glory of God and the name of Jesus Christ. And prayer really makes that the priority for all of our churches.
wonder if God would build our church if we decided to build His church in the city. All consuming.